Welcome back to our last lecture on PCI troubleshooting. So now we'll be talking about a very common and very important problem that can arise during uh, PCR. And uh, now let's assume you have done your job and you are quite proud to see that in your sample you have a nice PCR product just at the size that you expected and uh, well you got the same in your positive control so everything looks fine you're jumping up and down until you realize that in your negative control where you had no template whatsoever just water or you thought you had no template and just water in there nonetheless the PCR product would come up well what does that mean it means that some of your reagents are contaminated they are contaminated with the template. They contain some template that you inadvertently have PCR amplified. And this messes up all your diagnostic value of the PCR. You cannot tell whether you have in your positive and negative, uh, in your positive control and in your samples, whether you have amplified the template that you wanted to find by PCR or whether you have just amplified the contaminating uh, template in some of your reagents. So, how can you avoid that? Well, first of all, we have to ask where would the contamination be coming from? Now, here's an important thing to remember when you set up PCRs and when you have found contaminations. And that is you now got to trash all the reagents that you have been using to set up that PCRs. It starts with the water, with the buffer, the DNTPs, the primers, and even the TAC polymerase. You got to trash it all because your contamination may be in any of these reagents now. So that's an expensive thing to do, isn't it? So that's why you should, even before you set up any PCR, Take those reagents and aliquot them. That is, you distribute that vial of buffer into 10 Eppendorf tubes and you do the same with your DNTPs, you do the same with your primers, you use aliquots and only then you start working. Because in that way, even if some of these aliquots will get contaminated, that really can happen, even then it's enough to trash the aliquots that you have actually been using to set up the reaction. You trash that and to start all over you can use the next aliquots and in that way you keep some and you don't waste all that money of your advisor. Sources of contamination. Well there are several uh, that you can think of. What most people have in mind first of all is that maybe it's on my hands or maybe it's in some body fluids for instance in my saliva maybe I've been talking while pipetting the PCR and that would cause some drops of saliva dropping into my uh, tube and in case I've been trying to amplify something that is also contained within the human body that can indeed be a source of, uh, of uh, contamination so um, that would be one possibility also just Dust could be a possibility, so maybe some of my reagents are simply not clean enough and still contain some of the DNA that I'm trying to amplify. All that is possible, but tell you what, that's by far not the most important source of contamination. What do you think is the most important source? Easy enough. It's the product of your previous PCR. You probably have tried to amplify the same PCR product before. And whatever you got out of that, hopefully it was successful, maybe you got some PCR product, that is now a very dangerous source of contamination. You got millions and millions of that contaminating PCR product in the previous reaction. So if you carry over only a little bit into the new reaction, that does it. That will cause the contamination. So the previous PCR product that is by far the most important source of contamination. That's something that you definitely need to avoid.
So, what can you do about it? How can you avoid such contaminations? Well, there are quite a few things. Let's uh, start with the most obvious and the, and the most important thing to do, just to avoid that contamination from your previous PCR product. And that is, you need to separate the places and instruments that you use to set up the PCR from the place and the instruments that you use for analysis of the PCR product, typically the place where you run agarose gels to visualize the PCR uh, product. So you separate the places where you set up the PCR, PCR setup, from the place where you analyze your PCR products. PCR product analysis. So if you can, do it in a different room. Do your PCR setup with a different set of pipette and with a different set of tips and with a different lab coat and in a different room on a different bench. That's where you set up your PCR. Then you put it in the PCR machine. And after having done that, you never carry those tubes back into the first room. Instead, you go to a different place. And that's where you use different pipettes and different tips to analyze your PCR products by putting them on an agarose gel and by watching what you got. This will strongly help you to avoid the contamination of the next PCR by the product that you have just been amplifying. That's the most important thing to do. You can do a few more things though. What you can also do to avoid contaminations is to use gloves and also to use filter tips. That's pipetting tips that um, have a little bit of a filter in the place where it would normally touch the lower part of the pipette so that air can go through, but any droplets, any aerosols would not go through the filter. Those filter tips aren't exactly cheap, but they do help you to avoid contaminations in your PCR. The same is true for gloves. It will just avoid uh, coming any DNA from your body to enter the reaction. So that also helps to avoid contamination. Finally, what some people do, and it's actually it's a good idea, is to use a dedicated place just for setting up PCRs. So a dedicated place for PCR setup. And what they do is to irradiate this place on a regular base with ultraviolet irradiation. So ultraviolet or UV irradiation. That's something that will cause chemical modifications in the DNA. Typically what it will do is to connect two thymidine residues to each other in such a way. That's actually why UV can also hurt your skin when you expose your skin to the sunlight. It's the same story. The DNA will be exposed to UV and that's how the DNA will be damaged. And the same will happen to any contaminating PCR product that you accidentally may have spilled in the place where you set up the PCR. The UV irradiation will induce thymidine dimers and other modifications and this will render it impossible to amplify that contaminating piece of DNA subsequently. So even if you still have it in your uh, reaction, it won't give rise to a PCR product and that's what you want. So how can you avoid contamination? Most importantly, separate the PCR setup from the product analysis, secondly, just Try to work in a clean fashion using gloves and filter tips. And thirdly, try to define a dedicated place for your PCR setup. And you, in a way, you, you keep that place clean anyway. But in addition to that, you use ultraviolet 
irradiation to kill any contaminating DNA that might have been spilled anyway. Typically, people use a, a laminar flow that they don't need anymore for cell culture, and those frequently come with an, a UV irradiation device, and so you can use that to set up your dedicated PCR place. That's it for now. I hope your PCR will work from now on. If not, please drop a comment. Perhaps we can be of some more assistance. Thank you very much and goodbye.